Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're back. This is Ganesh from Cloud Complete, and I've got Taz with me. Um, so today we thought we'll um, handle a pretty um, uh, how do I put it? Um, so a common question that comes up sorry. over here. Uh, no need to apologize, Ganesh. Oh, it's thanks, Friday Josh. after all. So the common question that we get hit with is what is the difference between Skype as we all know it and Skype for business? Right. Uh, so you, you could be forgiven for thinking that they are the same thing. And um, I guess one of, the, one of the things that Microsoft does very well is they make, they make good products. And another thing that Microsoft are exceptionally good at is really confusing people <laughs> With the naming of their product. <laughs> That's true, Trash. I mean, so, um, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me the same question. So you've got Skype, and then you've got Skype for business. What's the difference? And, and why do I need Skype for business? Because yeah. Skype, Skype works, right? Right, absolutely. So I think, I think that it'll, it'll be a good thing for us just to handle um, the basic differences and then maybe mm -hmm. I'll do a deep dive in the later videos yeah yeah so today we'll just get in there well today what, what we will do is we'll just explain to you the differences and then put forward the the use case for Skype for business of why you Skype for business um, and so I guess to begin with a little bit of background so Skype as a, as a company started sometime back in the 90s I think it was the first probably instant messaging sort of online so communication that, that became widespread and um, I think Microsoft acquired Skype sometime in the last... Wasn't it about like five, six years back? Uh, yeah, possibly more recently than that, but it, look, it wasn't that long ago and right. um, they bought that and brought that under, under the Microsoft umbrella. And then uh, Skype for Business is, I guess after they acquired Skype, they yeah. were able to then use the naming rights, Skype for Business, because what it was previously called was something called Link, Link, Link Communicator, That's right. um, which used to be, it wasn't a cloud product, it was a, something you needed a server to run and um, ran on, you know, I guess it was more targeted at larger businesses. Now, obviously, you know, with the cloud, um, everything becomes available to the small business right. at, you know, that low price point. That's why we all, we all use cloud because it, we get a great amount of value for not for a very small price tag. So, so is that is that why they named it a Skype and Skype for Business? Because Skype, at the end of the day, is a consumer product, and Skype for Business is an enterprise. It's a business product. Maybe that's why they named it as such. Uh, yeah, I think Skype means Skype for Business. Well, Skype's a well-known brand. Everyone everyone knows what Skype is, and um, I guess attaching that brand to their business products, mm -hmm. Skype for Business, which I should point out is a, a completely different product despite the fact that it shares the same name. It's actually, th they couldn't be further apart in terms right. of um, what drives them on the, on the back end. So I think it's only the layout that's uh, a little similar if you think about it. Skype yeah. Skype for Business. Yeah. But the features are different. That's right. So let's just have a look here. So as you can see above uh, my head, uh, what, up here somewhere we've got the Skype logo. No, sorry. Um, which is the yeah, there. It's what it's typically the uh, the white S with the blue background, and then over next to Ganesh's head over there, we've got the Skype for Business logo. So it, the the branding is familiar. It's just the colors are inverted, sure. and that's how we know it's either Skype or Skype for Business. It looks like I'm thinking something. <laughs> so let's maybe take those away. But um, now you know. Now you know what they look like. <laughs> All right, so I guess the key differences here, as we've already touched on, Ganesh, uh, the consumer versus the business yes. product. So Skype is designed for the everyday person. Correct. Home use, uh, call your friends and family when you're overseas, that sort of thing. I've done that a lot. Yeah, I think we all have. So, so and, it, and it works really well for that. So uh, we're certainly not here today to tell you not to use Skype. We're just gonna tell you why you should use Skype for business. Um, now, Ganesh, what, what's the next biggest thing that you see as, I guess, point of difference between Skype and Skype for Business? Um, well, end of the day, uh, Taz, if you're not looking to make calls to phone numbers, uh, it's free. And we know nothing is free in this world. Right. So if you yeah. want an ad-free environment, I mean, Skype, at the end of the day, you, you do get ads from time to time. and, and, and Personally, I don't prefer ads. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, I, I, I like to use Skype for business because uh, if, if I'm a business owner, I would want an ad-free environment yeah. when it comes to 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so the, so the, I guess the key point there is Skype, it's a consumer product. They've made it free, but in order to make it free, they generate revenue from advertisements. advertisements. So you'll see ads on Skype, um, and I'm sure if you are using Skype, you already are aware of that. Mm-hmm. Skype for business, no ads. Uh, it's paid for through a subscription, so right. therefore they don't need that revenue that comes through advertising. That's true. Um, and the other thing is, um, you know, every day morning I just come in, I, I sign into my system, mm-hmm. and Skype for Business automatically signs in. It's a single sign-on. Mm-hmm. I don't need to. I don't need to remember um, a different email ID and a password. You know, it's 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 integrated with Office three sixty five, mm-hmm. and that takes care of uh, it for me. Yeah, so that single sign-on, not, not having to remember multiple passwords, and you know, depending on how your IT is set up, um, you know, one of the things we can do for you at Cloud Complete is we can set you up so that you log on to Windows with your Office 365 password, you log into email with the same account, Absolutely. you log into Skype for Business with the same yes. account, uh, you, we can even do the same thing for Dropbox, so you log into Dropbox with the same account. It's all nicely integrated one username and password which yeah. means you're not remembering multiple passwords and uh, writing them on sticky notes which uh, get attached to the monitor <laughs> yeah that's or, a mess. Or, or doing the old password one as the password. oh yeah of course <laughs> nice i still know secure. i still know a few people who do that so yeah. i'm sure there's plenty of people in fact, i'm sure there's some people watching now. um okay so and then uh, that's i guess the, the simple stuff and an overview and then obviously we Skype for business being a business grade product does offer a lot more functionality that's true. than your typical skype so um to run through to run through what those are so maybe a, a couple of quick ones that come to mind for me uh Hosting online meetings, which is something I'm sure many of us have done. Absolutely. Um, now, depending on, on how popular we are, we might we might draw a big crowd. I know we sometimes get... Sometimes you know, we do. Yeah, some of the webinars we do tend to pull a bit of a crowd. So one of the limitations of doing this in Skype is that they only allow 25, 25. attendees in a meeting, um, which is great, again, if you've got a small meeting, but as soon as you exceed that, it becomes a little bit... Well, it's just not going to work. Yeah, so exactly. So, um, Skype for business. What are we looking at there? I think the number is. Uh, I think it's closer to two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, it's two hundred fifty. And then I think there's also Skype for meeting broadcast, which allows you ten thousand. Okay. Um, yeah, I look forward to the day when we can actually hold a webinar. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> that would be awesome. I think I might get a little bit nervous. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the other thing it has is also we can record meetings with Skype for Business. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you remember, that's what we do with our webinars. We host it with Skype for Business and then we record it and then we send a free copy to all the attendees. So. Indeed, indeed we do. And we do that because not everyone can make it. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, the day doesn't go to plan and uh, we sign up for webinars and then we don't turn up. So. <laughs> Being able to send that webinar back to someone after the fact is often a really good way to yes. get, you know, yes. give them an opportunity to watch it because you know they probably were interested enough to, to come along because they signed up, uh, which is great for marketing. What else do we kind of see this being used for, Ganesh? I, know um, I find this a pretty useful feature in the sense, um, you know, let's say you ping me uh, mm-hmm. from a client's place and then I'm, I, I miss the conversation, mm-hmm. uh, it gets uh, stored in your email uh, mailbox or in your Outlook. Right. right. And then I can, so I can go and refer back uh, to that to see if there's anything that is urgently required. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a pretty good feature. Yeah, so the conversation history being saved into Outlook yes. you know, in a folder in your inbox or in your mailbox, I should say, is yeah. Yeah, definitely a handy feature. Um, and another thing that we see this used quite commonly for is in say meeting rooms or conference rooms, boardrooms, whatever the case may be. Um, it's actually possible to use Skype for business, attach it to proper video conferencing equipment like cameras and microphones. Uh, and then you've got a fully fledged video conferencing solution that is included with your Office 365 subscription. I mean, given that we're only paying sometimes as low as seven dollars a month right. for office 365 to get all of that included is incredible that's value. a huge saving yeah so look that's that's pretty much it i think uh just just to reiterate um on the differences ganesh if you like yeah um, sure so no ads no ads when it comes to skype for business mm-hmm. it's a single sign-on so single you know sign, sign into your windows and we can provide with a cloud complete we can provide access to skype one less business. password yep one less password um, if you if you're going to host more than 25 people in, a, in an online meeting, 
Sky for Business is the way to go. Right for marketing. Right for marketing, host and record meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and as Taz mentioned, um, it's a huge saving when it comes to um, video conferencing. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, get all the conversations uh, stored in, in your mailbox. Mm -hmm. That's it. So yeah, for Skype, consumer product, great for using at home, great for using with family and friends. Skype for business, business product, great for using at work. Yes. I think we'll wrap it up there. What we're going to do next time is we're actually going to get hands on with the product. So keep an eye out for the next video. Um, we'll actually show you how all of this works, what it looks like, how it yes. integrates with all the products in, in Microsoft Office, so Absolutely. Outlook and Word, Excel, PowerPoint, how it, they all actually integrate together. Um, um, and if you do like any particular feature in Skype for Business to be uh, demonstrated, leave a comment over there and we'll get back on that. Yeah, and of course, like always, if there's anything else that you want us to cover that maybe you're curious about, leave, leave a message uh, down below in the comments yes. or you can send us an email through to info at cloudcomplete.com.au or just send us a message on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn. They're pretty responsive on Facebook. We are, yeah, yeah, apparently we're extremely responsive. So get in touch and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you all.